Hello, my name is Patricio San Pedro. I'm a software engineering at Cisco, and I will talk about where artificial intelligence meets Internet of Things for anomaly detection. Well, here my biography. If you can, if you are interested, you can check out on the website. But I will start my presentation talking about a number: 37,000 people per year. What is this number about? It can be a lot of things. For example, it can be the people that change. Uh, jobs in the US, the robotories that there are in Europe, but not. This number is the number of people that dies of car accidents in the US. This is a huge number. Let me talk about the causes. The main causes are distracted driving, speeding, drunk driving, reckless driving, and when you are driving and there are bad uh, weather conditions. If almost all of that you can sum up like you are having like a bad day and you are distracted, you are not paying attention to the road. Okay, sorry. Um, so now we already have that it's a safety problem and we know the causes. So what does stop us to actually solve that problem? Some of you will tell me like, oh, this is because it's not a financial impact. The companies are not interested on that. But this is not true because actually uh, the logistic companies has uh, lose a lot of money every time that there has an accident. For example, they have to pay uh, the medical costs, the god costs, but the most important thing is that they lost clients, so they lost reliability. So, okay, let's sum up what we have until now. We have a safety impact, a financial impact, and we know already the causes, so uh, what to stop us to avoid that? Well, it's not as easy. How you can, even you know the causes, how you can avoid the consequence that it's having an accident. So, in my team, we have seen that a lot of these accidents are caused because the driver are not paying attention to the road. If you are be able to, uh, to advise the driver that he's having a bad driving pattern when he's engaging that pattern, you will avoid the accident. So, using that approach, we wanted to detect two of these bad driving patterns. That is tailgating and driving careless in dangerous condition. So, in order to advise the driver when he is starting to do that. How we do that? In order to do that, we use artificial intelligence. We use two methodologies. Machine learning for detecting tailgating and fuzzy logic for detecting driving careless in dangerous condition. Let me take you to a whole picture of my project. We have cars. This car is sensing, sending uh, nearly real data to our cloud. In our cloud, you can find two main uh, things. The first one is the big data platform, uh, where all the data is processing, and the anomaly detection application, where these patterns are analyzing in order to discover them. OK, which software libraries we use? There are we use, for machine learning, we use Lasagne. Um, in the back end, you can find it Ciano. And we use fuzzy logic libraries, like a sky, um, science fuzzy. So, OK, until now, from now to the end, I will talk about the use cases and what they are and how we actually detect them. So, what is tailgating? I'm sure that almost everyone here have al sometimes done tailgating. But let me take an overview. So it's when you are not keeping the distance between you and the car in front of you. So when you brake, the people in front of, um, when you are tailgating, the, if the people in front of you brake, you have to brake. If you slow down, if the people in front of you slow down, you have to brake. But if the people in front of you speed up, you will speed up because you are not maintaining the secure distance. This is a huge problem because if the people in front of you brake and you don't react on time, you will crash over. So how do we detect that? Actually, it's pretty easy. We just have some input variables that in this case is speed and brake, only sensor data. And we use neural network in order to process that pattern. And finally, we just, uh, our output is if it's an anomaly or if it's not an anomaly. OK, but now you can ask me, how you can know a pattern if you only have one instance value? 
But that is because we not only have one instance value, we have 100 values of speed, 100 values of break that are correlated between time. And we actually use a specific time, a specific type of neural network, that is recurrent neural network. This neural network, it's nice because uh, has memory, so it's be able to understand that maybe the first value and the third value has a correlation between them. So we already detect the tailgating. Our accuracy for that is pretty nice, it's 99.1, and the most important thing here is that all the errors that we have are false positive. So let's talk about the second use case, driving carless in dangerous condition. But first, let me ask you something. If I'm telling you, yeah, sorry. If I'm telling you I'm driving 49.9 miles per hour, maybe you tell me I'm driving fast, maybe you are telling me that I'm driving slow. But I'm sure that I'm driving as much fast as if I'm driving 50.1 miles per hour. This is because our brain is able to understand these degrees of truth. But if you probably ask a computer, maybe they will not understand that because they work with Boolean logic. Well, so you just have some slots, and if you jump to the next slot, it's done. So maybe I will be in the first value, I will be driving distance, but in the next value, I will be driving high speed. For this reason, we decided to use fuzzy logic. Fuzzy logic. Um, this uh, be able to, for example, if I'm driving 45 miles per hour, I will be driving more like 20% distance speed and 80% high speed. So it's be able to understand exactly how our brain works. OK, so now that we understand how fuzzy logic works, um, how we detect exactly that bad driving pattern. So in order to do that, we define variables using this logic, the speed of the car, the current condition, and the current weather. And then we just use some rule-based case that everyone will understand. If the speed is high and the condition of the road are poor, and the weather is sunny, then it's unsafe to drive. So here is how we detect this. But driving, let me take you an overview of what actually the workflow of my application goes. Where our cars are sensing data. In this case, we are sending the speed. Big Data Analytics Platform analyze it and sending to the uh, um, anomaly detection application. They, as the real APIs, like Google Maps and ETC, real-time contextual data. And with that, we are able to detect um, in 0 0.1 second if it's um, a bad driving pattern or not. So as I already have time, because I, will, I want to give you an overview of how you can use fuzzy logic using Python. because. Machine learning, you can find thousands of tutorials on internet, but I think that fuzzy logic is really interesting. So we just define some variables, and the most interesting is that you just, if you can see, you just define some rules you s that everyone can understand. If weather is sunny or weather is cloudy, then it's not an anomaly. And you just compute that, and it works. So let me take you an overview of the results. So as I said, machine learning is so useful. You can detect really difficult patterns using that, but the computational uh, speed is a little bit high in comparison with other artificial intelligence methodologies can be like um, fuzzy logic. And the accuracy for our both case was pretty nice. So my, con my conclusion after doing that project uh, it's like a small projects can have real financial impact, first of all. And then that actually you cannot be, you cannot want to use machine learning because now there is a lot of hype about that. Where you really need to find the correct algorithm for every use case. So thank you so much. Um, if you have any question, you can contact me now or you can contact me by email. Uh, thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions for Patricia? Yes, I do. Oh, okay.
Here we go. Um, thanks very much, Patricia. Is there a difference in processing real-time versus historical data for machine learning? Actually, for machine learning, um, this is any difference for them. You just take the data and you process the algorithms. The, the difference is for the big data analytics platform. OK, and um, are there hardware or CPU or memory requirements, or do those resources need to grow based on the amount of data? Yes, of course. You have to scale it up. OK. Good. Any other questions? No? All right. Um, oh, OK. Yeah, hello, Patricia. I heard that you use some live external API for the contextual data using for the physics logic to detect something like the bad condition, weather condition or something like yes. that. Yes. Yeah, I was wondering if you have an, something else, the uh, contextual data, something like a map or something to, to do more things uh, in your project. Um. Sorry, can you repeat again the question? I mean, uh, uh, how many external uh, contextual data you use in your application to make it more I powerful? I so use the GPS mm -hmm. that basically with the GPS allows me to know the weather and the current road conditions. So I just use two different APIs, but the contextual data is only GPS. So does it mean uh, you or the physiologic things will do the live um, Analysis, analysis, or you can do historical analysis as well. I can do both. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, what, one more question. Uh, the data that you were using, um, is it actual um, data collected from automobiles, or wh where did you obtain the data set to feed into the system? The data we use, um, we have OBD in the car, so our teammates, uh, has driving with this OBD, so we collect this data and we mix it up using also some open source uh, self-driving car that Udacity has, has put it in the GitHub. We mix it together, but basically our main source is the OBD that we have in the cars of our teammates. So, yes. Great, thank you. You're welcome. All right, cool. <laughs> thank you. All right, so that is the end of the IoT.